Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for today. And I wanted to cover a couple of topics uh, because they kind of tie into each other. So for one, uh, if you weren't already aware, since last Thursday up until this Thursday, uh, we have a double XP event in terms of uh, artifact XP, which is an event that people always look forward to. And usually I put out a video saying, you know, what artifacts to level, what artifacts are worth uh, ranking up to 200. But I mean, there's been no artifact changes. Um, besides the ones I've already covered. So I, I really don't think there's much sense of uh, use for a solo video like that. But it ties into another video, the topic that I was going to cover, because I, this is probably the most, uh, not the most common, but like the second, like top three. In terms of top three most commonly asked questions I get is, you know, what's the best might power set? What's the best pre uh, precision power set? You know, what's the best power? You know, how, rank the powers. And you always see other YouTubers and DC cover this as well. They rank the, like the top might ones or the tier ranking in terms of power sets. But there's always a, a second side to those types of videos. And the reason why I've never done it is because uh, it, it's subjective. And I wanted to share that with you today uh, because it, it's something that new players need to know. A lot, if you've been playing DC, you already have kind of a grasp on that, but a lot of players are they're either new to the game or they're coming back to the game, and they're asking, like, what's the best power, or, or what should I be using? Everyone's going to say gadgets or electricity or rage prep, whatever, but it, just saying that isn't actually true. So what these YouTubers and what players in game, what they forget to leave out is that everything that makes those powers good, and, and power sets in general. So, and that is artifacts and allies. So if, uh, you know, big spoiler, DC Universe Online DPS is 100% pay to win. There's not a shred of evidence that anyone can put forth that DPS is not pay to win in this game. So, and what I mean by that is that, take, take for example, gadgets. Everyone's going to say gadgets is the best power. If you're, if you're gadgets and you have like, you know, 120 rank artifacts or, you know, like level six or seven allies and you go up against a quantum DPS and a quantum DPS has max legendary allies and 200 artifacts, it doesn't matter that you're gadgets. You lose. You lose like nine times out of 10 unless the DPS, is, the quantum DPS is just bad. But if you, if you take not even like above average DPS, if you take like an average DPS against you, so you're get like the best power set in the entire game, gadgets, everyone's been telling you to go gadgets and you've got like 120, 140 artifacts against a quantum that has 200s and max allies, you lose. It doesn't matter. It could be, it doesn't have to be quantum. It could be Sork. It could be a sorcery DPS with max artifacts, max uh, allies against you, the supposedly best powers in the game everyone told you to be with 120s or, or 80s and you're getting whooped by 10, 15, 30 mil. That's going to happen. So, what you have to really consider is that this game completely revolves around max rank artifacts in this game. Allies to a lesser degree. I mean, allies, sure, the, the combat one is going to be huge. So it, taking a look at like the AOE or you're taking a look at like, say, Crypto or House of Legends bot. I mean, every you know time you spawn that on a boss, it's, it's a guaranteed free million damage. Same thing with like a, on like a Superman. You're getting like a million damage in like six seconds. That's, that's incredibly hard to pass up. Uh, at least Crypto and House of Legends bot are, are easy to level for single target, so you're not really missing it on there. That's that's super cheap. They're rares, but the legendary ones in terms of damage, like Superman, in terms of like Batman, in terms of their actual damage for AOE, uh, and then you tying into Emperor Aquaman having to level him to legendary, so you get the one supercharges you. The ally uh, power cooldown is reduced. So you know if a DPS has max ranked allies, he's churning out this combat ally damage every you know every cooldown. Sometimes even faster, depending on what kind of superchargers you're using in like a I Gemini spam group. So the faster you're getting out, the, the millions of free damage they're getting from just from their allies. And in terms of artifacts, same thing. I, I'm going to show a couple examples here just to kind of show what I'm talking about. But, you know, it is heavily revolving around artifacts. So if you're precision DPS, you need, uh, and that ties into this double week, but if you're precision DPS, transformation, strategist card, either Gemini and scrap the soul cloak. Those are the four artifacts you need. If you're never going to swap artifacts, I mean, that's fine. Then you just need these three. Uh, but that's the thing. You are not competitive whatsoever against end game DPS or like, it doesn't have to be end game DPS, just DPS that have a bigger wallet or, or like a, a more room on their credit card. You stand no chance to beat them unless they are just a terrible DPS. 
And you're going to find those. And I'm sure the comment section is going to be flooded with, oh, I rank 80 artifacts and I'd be 200 ranked DPS all the time. Yeah, that's because those DPS are garbage. They have no idea what they're doing. They just, you know, they have, a, like like I said, they have a huge wallet, bunch of room on their credit card, bunch of disposable income. doesn't make them a good DPS if they have no clue what they're doing. But if you take like an average DPS with, like I said, a- average DPS with these four artifacts as a like, graduate's prec versus you with rank 80s, you're losing nine times out of 10 or even 10 times out of 10. And then my DPS is even worse. You need Transformation Strategist, I the Gemini, Scrap the Soul Cloak, Solar Amplifier, Quizlet, and then uh, Linear's Amulet. That's just if you want a Mike DPS properly for most power sets. And then if you want a pet DPS, it has to be Mercy's uh, Artifacts, Source Shard, and Quizlet. And then you've got to worry about swap artifacts like Dead King Scepter, Philosopher's Stone, Pie Pepper's Flute, depending on what supercharge you're using. So, I mean, you know, if you want to, like, say, like, we'll take the, the pet DPS out of here, the equation for a sec. So, if you want to properly my DPS, I mean, that's 10 artifacts. 10 artifacts that are probably going to be, during a sale, unless you're flush with source marks, you're probably looking at between $100 and $150 per artifact. And then for allies, you're looking at probably around $150 as well, because ally uh, antimental never comes on sale, or ally favor. They, they hardly ever run ally sales because they're so the cost is so huge to uh, level them and they're a huge revenue stream. But imagine 10 artifacts. That's like $1,000 in artifacts. So just imagine, like, if you're picking up DC, you're coming back to DC Universal Line, and that's why whenever it says, like, what's the best power or, like, what power should I be, I said, my question that I always say is how much are you willing to put in the game or do you care about being top damage? That's the first question I ask. But people watching these other YouTube videos or or um, getting advice in game, they're not asking that question. They're just saying, "Oh, what's the best power in the game? Go gadgets, rage prec, electric prec, you know, munitions might." You know, that's what they're that's what they're saying. But they're not saying, "Are you coming back to the game or brand new to the game?" Oh, yeah, drop us a thousand dollars, and that's that's not even like taking account like allies, because most of the time you're gonna need three legendary allies, so that's like four or five hundred dollars in allies. And then like a thousand dollars in artifacts, just if you want to DPS properly. Like for for people that have have been through multiple sales and and number of years, because I mean artifacts have been out forever. What like twenty eighteen, I think it was. So they they it doesn't feel that that much of a dollar figure to them because over years they've been. I mean some of the best artifacts like transformation strategies, either the Gemini scrap solar. These were around forever. I mean some of these were like the like scrap and solar are some of like the OG artifacts. So, like, most people already have them even leveled, even naturally. Same thing, Dead King's been out for a really long time. I mean, even Quiz has been out for a decent time, same with uh, Linera. So, people have these, like, naturally leveled, and, and they don't think about, like, oh, yeah, I've actually got, like, a $1,000 worth of artifacts sitting in my character. So, that's what I need you guys to know as, as players before you ask that question. Because if you watch a video and they rank power sets, it's useless absolutely useless unless like they put like a disclaimer saying these are the best rankings if you have max artifacts and max allies which are going to cost you thousands of dollars so really if you're going to play decent inverse line or coming back to the game or, or you come across this video just be mindful that you can still have a fun time like without with lower artifacts lower allies a lot of the power sets are all similar the base damage of most of the power sets are all similar so if you're if you're picking a power set in this game, you want to be electric, you want to be sorcery nature, whatever. The base damage is very similar. What changes drastically is when you bring the artifacts into the equation. It changes drastically in terms of then then you're looking at like gadgets with stealth running four supercharges having Gemini spam. Then you're looking at electric and rage with them, which are the most powerful supercharges in the game in terms of being able to spam them every like twelve to fifteen seconds. You know, and then you're you're thinking like uh like nature, or not nature necessarily, but like electric with like its dots proccing strategist card procs. You're looking at like the the dots of transformation card on on like burst powers. So massive differences come to play. Single target damage with heat vision. You know, pet damage with quizlet, the mega blast. Every time you pop a supercharge, you get a refractor beam and the one percent supercharge regen. And so that's what massively massively changes dps in this game is when you factor in artifacts and to a lesser degree allies but allies are starting to get worse um i mean batman laughs yeah it's an rng card proc emperor Aquaman helps with a supercharge if, if you're not in a supercharged spam group then he doesn't he's not as beneficial 
but uh, I mean the combat allies are huge in terms of the damage they can produce. So let's get into a couple examples. I know I've been talking for a while. Um, so let's let's touch on some examples here to show you kind of better prove this point. So for this example, I'll be showing uh, two rotations. So just a standard ELEC AOE rotation on eight targets with transformation strategies in Quizlet. And then I'll be doing the exact same. We're doing four parses, 30 seconds. I know it's a small sample size, but I mean, it's a show point. Uh, and then I'll be doing the exact same rotation without any artifacts or allies. So I'm going to take off all the artifacts. I'm going to take off the uh, Batman or Laughs ally because it's going to give me the passive stat bonus. So any kind of artifact and ally I'm taking off. The might's going to be similar. I got it to about 100 difference in might, which is, I mean, not going to be much of a difference at all over the course of a rotation. It's 100 might. So basically this will show the, the exact same rotation. So if you haven't seen it, it all of this is going to be Genesis, Arc, Tesla, Voltaic, and then uh, Arc, Lightning, Electrocute, and Repeat. So Genesis, Arc, Tesla, Voltaic, Arc, Electrocute, Voltaic, and then Repeat. And this will be the same rotation that I'm going to be doing for four parses of 30 seconds, etc. And then I'm going to show you in the combat log analyzer what it looks like with artifacts and allies and without artifacts and allies. Okay, so the test you just so this is the combat log analyzer. It's only available to PC players in terms of being able to access your combat log. But uh, we're looking at a couple exam few examples here. But uh, the first example, this is the rotation that I did with full artifacts, full our allies. Uh, we've got four 30 second parses for electric with Quizlet. So Quizlet did about 1.6 mil damage in that time. Myself in terms of abilities did about 20, 28.2 million. Combat breakdown arc lightning was first with 30% of my damage because of how it splits on the eight targets. And then secondary to that was tactical advantage, which, the, which is your strategic carp rocks, which was 23% and everything else in that rotation. So just 30 million damage total. 44% average, average crits. So just be mindful. This is with Transformation Strategist Card, Quizlet, and Batman or Laughs, Art Ally. Now, the second example. This is just me. This is no artifacts, no allies. The same might. Like I said, the might difference was like 112, which is negligible. So in terms of combat breakdown, Arc Lightning was accounted for 38%, then Voltaic with 22. So I don't have that 1.6 million from Quizlet. And if you were the parser summary, still the same thing, four 30-second parsers, but I did 18 million damage with an average crit of 24. So from 30 million down to 18, or about 19, basically, because it's 18.9, and about 20% crit difference. So 11 million damage. 11 million damage in 120 seconds came from artifacts. Came from the transformation, came from the strategy card procs, procking in tandem with the animation of the transformation card procking the criticals and the dots, and then the, the 1.6 mil from Quizlet and Mega Blast and everything else. So 11 million damage just from those artifacts. And like, yeah, I could go more in depth in terms of like one, like 80 artifacts versus 120 artifacts versus 160 artifacts versus 200 artifacts. So that's not the point of this video. I mean, I could always do a video like that down the road if you really want to see it. Uh, you can let me know in the comment section if you want to. This is basically just to prove my point here in terms of what your DPS will look like starting fresh in terms of what it looks like with max 200 rank artifacts and allies. So another example here is we're going to take a look at a nature rotation. Uh, super simple, just uh, set up the three poisons, going to go into gorilla form, and then just basically using like a simple AOE rotation. Now with this rotation, and our oh, artifact setup would be just a uh, standard transformation strategy card soul amplifier. So when you're doing this rotation, you're going to think, well, I'm in, I'm in gorilla form. So, I mean, heat vision is going to be doing a lot of damage. I've got all the burning dots on eight targets. I've got the explosion damage. I mean, I got an AOE finisher damage. You know, I've got all the nature poison dots ticking. So think to yourself, where do you think all the damage during this rotation is going to come from? So we'll just kind of set this up just to show an example of rotation. So basically, we're just setting up the three poisons. 
Going to Gorilla. Harvesting on Gorilla right away, and then basically just doing Heat Vision. Peeling Thorns Finisher, and then basically Voracious Plants, and basically just repeating. So Heat Vision into Impaling Thorns, Harvest, Voracious Plants, and just kind of repeat. I'm going to do this for, you know, four partials of like 30 seconds. And where do you think all the damage is going to come from in this rotation? Let me jump to the Combat Log Analyzer and actually show you. Okay, so this is the combat log analyzer for that nature rotation. It's so like I said before, we got four 30 second partials. We did about 32 million damage in that 120 seconds. Average crit was 46.9. So now if we go to the combat breakdown, which will show you where the actual damage came from. 47.5% of that rotation in 120 seconds came from strategy card procs. So my strategy card damage did 8.4 million damage from the strategist card. 356 procs. With the smallest being 13k up to 45k. That's completely passive damage. After that, it was amplified heat vision with you know 3.1, impaling thorns is 2.4. So it's like the normal rotation. So completely free passive damage that not, I didn't have to change anything in the rotation. I'm just doing the, the typical standard gorilla nature rotation for AoE. And I got 8.4 million damage from one artifact. So just imagine if you're in that similar situation of AoE, which I mean doesn't happen a ton of times in raids, but there's plenty of examples that do. Like, fi like take for example, like Fire and Brimstone, Final Boss, ads everywhere, boss everywhere. You know, if you were going against someone, say you're, 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 you're in nature DPS, not using strategy card, you're using some other thing. Um, Maybe Quizlet. You're using like Quizlet instead of strategy card. You're losing 8.4 million damage in 120 seconds versus a nature DPS using strategy card procs. Using strategy card. So just one artifact, like I said before, one artifact gets you like almost 8.5 million damage. And that's what you're missing out by not having the strategy card at 200 rank. Because the difference between the 160 and 200 rank is a lot. It's 30% damage. So the the, two, the 160 strategy card, uh, I mean, you still get a bit of a damage, but it's the damage is huge. There's a huge gap between rank 160 and 200. Strategy card has to be at 200 to be uh, entirely effective. So just on a final note, if you did want to know what artifacts to level for roles, I know this deep video is just about DPS, but if you're looking to cover anything else, two months ago I had a video from the last double XP week what should you level? And in this video, I'm going to go through all the examples of what artifacts you should have outside the meta, stuff like that. There's been tiny bit of changes in terms of like uh, computers HUD change, Venom Suspensor slightly changed, Jim Horus, Lazarus Pit Water, stuff like that. Not enough really to change any, like there's nothing that would uh, change with those artifacts. The six ones that were adjusted, which was computers, Venom Risk, Jim Horus, Megahedron, Lazarus Pit Water, and... Was there one other one? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, Demon Fang was the other one. Demon Fang. So like I said before, it, it's nothing really charged. I mean, if you want to go completely battle healed, then yeah, you could pick up Demon Fang. That'll work well with the Clarion. Lazarus Pit Water, you know, we're not going to talk about that. Computers HUD, still, you know, still a niche category. Venom Suspensor, it's not good enough as a swap artifact. And if it was, it's only going to be swapped artifact. It's not going to be a main DPS art. Same thing with Gemma Horus, wasn't changed enough to matter. And Omega Hedron wasn't changed enough to matter. But check out this video if you want to see what those artifacts are. I'll link it in the description as well as the comment section. But if you want to know what artifacts to level during the bonus artifacts next week, just check out this video.